Hi everyone, welcome back to RM Podcast Florida. This is your host, Romina. The guest for today is Jonathan Torres. He started as a salesman back in 2004. After working about four years as a salesman, he found himself going back to get his Bachelor of Business Administration at State University of New York. Later on, he became a finance manager, a used car sales manager, and in 2017, he was holding a position as general sales manager in Alpharetta, Georgia. Since July of 2018, he is in charge of the Audi Jacksonville. He is the general sales manager at the Audi Jacksonville, Florida location. On this interview, he just gives us a little bit more background of what it took him to get to this position. And one of my favorite questions for the interview was the advice he would give his 20-year-old self. So without losing any time, let's just dig into the interview. Hello, so the interview today consists of Jonathan Torres, who is the general sales manager for Audi at Jacksonville, Florida. First, we'll just go ahead and allow him to introduce himself and tell us a little bit about himself and how did he go about reaching the current position. Uh, good afternoon, Romina. Uh, my name is Jonathan Torres. I'm the general sales manager over here at Audi Jacksonville. Thank you for having me today. Um, as far as coming to my current position, I think the, the majority of it has to do with work ethic and working extremely hard to be able to achieve your goals. Uh, this has been a long path for me. I got, got in the car business in 2001, and here I am, you know, 2019, actually, you know, running stores. So uh, it's, it's a very long and hard path um, of long hours, no days off, no weekends. And just really a long grind in order to get to uh, any type of successful spot. Do you remember your first day on the floor as a salesman? I do. You do? I do. Your first sale? First sale, yeah. Nice. What was your first car? It was a tan Lincoln LS. It was a V8. They made them in V6 and V8. Mine was a, a V8. And that was my first. I was a used car. I made a bunch of money on it and I was hooked ever since. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. My uh, my very first sale was actually two sales at once. Nice. Which the Show off. brother came. Well, I still don't believe it. Yeah. The brother came in to buy a Rav Four, and the sister just ended up buying a Camry. Oh, buying one. So great. I remember to this day. Um, how important um, do you find investing on yourself at a young age like yourself, even with multiple setbacks that often might come across you, and you might might wanna make you give up on your goals and your career and maybe change the path. I mean, I think the, the key is just consistency and not letting anything change your path. Uh, investing in yourself is, is tremendous and helping yourself grow in order to, to become to become better. Nine times out of 10, that investment is really just experience and time doing it. You know, I always say it takes three years to master any position um, just because you have to have that life experience going through it. And um, often uh, we get influenced by others, and especially living in today's <coughs> social media and the environment. Um, what do you do to keep yourself out of that noise, and what do you do to keep that eagle vision? So no matter what, you're still going to go for your goals, and you, you're still going to accomplish what you have in mind. Like, how do you keep your focus? So every day I've got a to-do pad, mm -hmm. and I write down every morning... I've got to do this, 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 and this. And I mean, it gets as, as detailed as, uh, you know, taking the dog out to uh, going to the gym. So, and I make sure once I'm done with it, boom, I scratch it off and I go right down to the next one. Because every day you're going to have stuff that pulls you in 25 different directions, mm -hmm. right? Especially running a big dealership. So, once you get back to it, okay, let me go back to my notes, my things to do. i got to scratch off this next one, yeah. Do you prioritize your list? Yeah. Sure. You do. Yeah. And do you have like a, an agenda, a monthly calendar that you just kind of plan out your month ahead of time? Yeah. You do? Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, obviously as goals get uh, get put on you by the manufacturer as far as how many cars you're supposed to sell, you know, obviously that's going to that's gonna adjust, um, it, you know, dramatically based on how much time I have to be on the floor 
um, really pushing the sales volume versus doing the day-to-day -day clerical stuff, right? So I'm going to prioritize selling cars first, and then number two is going to be uh, getting everything else done. How do you motivate your salespeople to hit the goals? Because you, I'm sure you work with a motivated team itself. Correct. So otherwise, you're not going to be able to work in sales. But how do you help them to hit their goals and reach out, like extend their goals? So basically, I mean, I just spent, I'm, I'm good friends with, with a lot of the guys. Not so much, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with them, but I mean, I, I take care of them. Mm -hmm. And I lead by example rather than telling them what to do. So if I say, hey guys, I need some help, they're they're jumping. I mean, they're, they're ready to move just because I've, I've shown them in the past, you know. The, the best way to motivate someone is to put money in their pocket. So by me getting out there and really putting a deal together for them mm -hmm. and them not really having to do much and me saying, hey, here's this car sale, you know, go gas it up. They're like, oh, this guy's really cool. You know? yeah. I'm going to do whatever, whatever he needs at any time. That's a help for the moment that might need them to push them a little bit. Correct. That is true. Um, as we know, people have strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, what would you suggest to everyone and to like how to turn a weakness into a strength? Um, if you can share a personal experience, I'm sure we had a weakness at some point. My weakness was that I did not read a lot and I'm just trying to improve that myself, but yeah. like personally wise. Um, naturally, I'm kind of an introvert. So, you know, I really had to focus on putting myself in uncomfortable situations. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, a lot of it just has to do with experience and and doing it often. Uh, I grew up training jiu-jitsu for years and years and years, and you know, the only way for you to go from a white belt to a black belt, mm -hmm. so all the steps in between, and all that experience, we call it mat time. You just need more mat time. That must be nerve-wracking though, to put yourself out there first when you're an introvert. Yeah, you just have to do it. Yep, <laughs> unless you get out of your comfort zone, exactly. right? Exactly, <laughs> then it gets comfortable after a while true it's like your familiar space after a minute you're like oh i know how to handle this yeah and um automo automotive business is not easy as a career um like i did share i worked in automotive businesses uh, for a while too there's a lot of sales fields out there that might not be as easy and they're a little bit more aggressive and we can agree that automotive business is one of them mm -hmm. um what advice would you give to somebody that works in that field or somebody that is looking that works in a field that is not as easy sales like, how do they build their relationship with a customer? How do they close that deal, even if the numbers are really high or really low? Like, how do you get to that step? Don't let anything frustrate you. You know, you're going to have 100 no's on a daily basis if you're doing your job effectively. Don't let it frustrate you. You know, uh, once it happens, you get a no, you... You get four more no's, you know, I always tell my sales associates, don't let the customer leave until you've gotten seven no's, you know, and then put the smile back on your face and start fresh. You know, if you let one no frustrate you, this is not the business for you. You know, I think you just, just really don't let it get frustrated, you know, don't let it frustrate you, just keep on working hard. Stay, stay, stay diligent. Thank you. Um, I remember my manager say it's not a no, it's a question they have about the product you haven't explained. Mm -hmm. So I always remember that for like every sales that I work. Yeah, for sure. And then we have just two more questions. Cool. What advice would you give to tw your 20-year-old self, self from what you've learned so far from life? My 20-year-old self? Mm -hmm. From career-wise, maybe to do a smarter, shorter path to get to where you're at right now? Yeah, that's a very good question. I was pretty crazy in my early 20s. I said, don't, 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 don't go out on the weekends as much. You really devote more of your time to, uh, to your career. It would have been, uh, would have took me a lot less, lot less time earlier on. You know, I sold cars for four years uh, prior to, to going into management. If I didn't party on the weekends and you know, hang out with my friends and really work my butt off, yeah, uh, it, that would have happened a lot sooner. Thank you. And then the very last one, I'm always intrigued to the respond of this, it's what is your definition of success? Like, when would you say that you're successful in life? You might say that now you're a pretty good successful stage, or is there a certain... I think everyone always wants more, no matter what it is. Um, I associate success... Now, at my level, I associate people of success for people who have wealth, people who do not have to go to work that have residual income coming in, right?
client somebody whether it be real estate and you own 20 investment properties and you've got you know twenty thousand dollars a month coming in and then you have and then you're working on top of that and making a lot of money on top of that that's a successful person you know somebody that that comes to work because they love it not because they have to so going back to do what you love doing and also try to have passive income Correct. so you don't leave paycheck to paycheck because that's a big that's a big struggle yeah, which sure. unfortunately a lot of people go through There's but in so order to get to that. be to the successful stage you have to go through those phases yeah so you've got to have wealth true wealth in order to have success awesome well i definitely want to thank you a lot for taking your time and doing the podcast with us My this pleasure. is for rm podcast florida any last advice that you would like to give to our listeners since this is a brand new podcast yeah success doesn't happen happen overnight work your butt off day in and day out year after year it will happen thank you so much mr torres i really appreciate it My pleasure.